What's up, everybody? This is Neil Real, and this is Let's Please God, the ministry that helps you stay right with God and find victory over sin and the devil. Today, we're talking about the problem with romance. This is a follow-up to a talk I had regarding the five reasons marriages fail, and one of them was cultural lies. Okay, so your, your, your society, your culture that you live in tells you something about men and women and how they should interact with one another what is expected of each other in a relationship in order for it to be successful. And in this case, I believe romance is a deception. Uh, I think elements of romance are acceptable, they're normal, but then the general sense of what romance is, at least in this culture, in American culture, Western culture, is a lie. One of the complaints of women today is that their men are not romantic enough. So today we're going to talk about romance, uh, what the Bible has to say about it, and what we can do about this. All right, so here's what is romance. Well, romance, defined by Wikipedia, is an emotional feeling of love for or strong attraction towards another person and the courtship behaviors undertaken by an individual to express those overall feelings and resulting emotions. So when a person feels a certain way about another person, they express how they feel through the following, what we call romantic gestures, exchanging gifts, words of affirmation, poetry, songs, meals and trips, sex. So these things in and of themselves are not wrong. However, it's what has been sold to women about romance and men, of course. OK, so here's the problem with romance. Romance is promoted to women as the ideal relationship. So romance must be constant in your relationship. If you don't have constant romance in your relationship, then you don't have a good relationship, all right? So when there are pockets where a woman is not feeling the romance from her husband or boyfriend or whoever, she may begin to feel unloved, discontent, and unhappy. Now, the Bible talks about there being times for love. In Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse eight says, there's a time for love, there's a time for hate, there's a time for war, and there's a time for peace. So right there, when romance tells you that you must have this euphoric feeling, you must have this, this, this exchange of gifts and all these different things, and this, this should be a constant thing going on within your marriage, that's just not true. There's a time and a place for everything, and every, it, you can't be romantic all the time. Now, I know most women don't believe that, but there's some women who believe when there's a spot in their relationship where it's just a long period of no romance, they feel like, well, something's wrong with the relationship. However, Ecclesiastes, written by King Solomon, who was one of the wisest men on the planet, pretty much understood from the wisdom of God that there's, there's a time and place for everything. This is not, it can't be constant. You can't be romantic all the time. So that's the first problem. All right. So most women, they understand it. They know there's going to be downtime. But here's the second thing here. Here's the second problem with romance. In a gynocentric society, romance becomes female worship. The burden is on the man to show how much he loves his woman, but the man's needs, he's often neglected in this area. For the most part, it's about how he can please her. It is, it's not equal, is what I'm saying here. You know, and this is why women complain about not be, you know, getting the romance, because romance has become about women. When you read the novels, when you watch the movies, it's about the woman. When a man puts a woman as his, his focus, when he makes her his all, his center, what he lives for in life. You know, a lot of guys make a lot of money and subconscious is really so I can contract the, the prettiest woman so that I can give her the world. I want to marry the most beautiful woman and give her the world. So he's living to pretty much please a woman. And that's worship of a woman, which is idolatry. God said, put no other gods before me. But yet this man has made this woman his world, made this woman his God. That's what's going on in this country. And the women are ruling, okay, too, as well. So the women are in charge. They're, they're, they're pretty much queens and goddesses. And the men are pretty much these re resource slaves for the women. And men have accepted this, this mindset towards women. And it's detrimental to both parties. So... That's another problem with this romance that is, is centered on women. It's not mutual, but it should be. It should be a mutual thing where the man is going out and doing all he can to, to show this woman how much he loves her 
And the woman should be going out her way and doing everything she can to show that she loves him. It ain't usually that way, though. The man has to win her through all these different practices and jumping through hoops and buying her all this stuff and all that kind of stuff. Another thing here, and this is another problem with romance, is that it spoils a woman. Once a woman starts getting all this attention and affection, this excessive worship, because a woman was not created to be worshipped, it just goes to her head. The more you worship in her, she's not satisfied. So you can start giving her gifts and, and, and buying her expensive drinks and, and, and buying her um, clothes and sending her on her shopping sprees and taking her on trips and love letter after love letter, poetry. It becomes where she just wants more and more of it. She likes it, but it just goes to her head. She's not built to receive. She's not a god is what I'm saying. Gods can only handle this kind of stuff. And only God in heaven, our father, is the only God that can receive this level of praise and, and not feel unsatisfied after receiving it. Because he's God, he's due the praise and the worship. Women are not due praise and worship unless they have performed praiseworthy service as a wife. And we're gonna talk about that later on. So a woman, it goes to a woman's head and she becomes insatiable where she's just unsatisfied. And you'll see a woman on television complaining about her husband is not romantic. Yet the husband and bought her everything. The husband is rich and good looking. The husband takes care of all the bills and she sits there still discontent. And it's like, you ungrateful woman, what is wrong with you? Well, the problem is, is that he was worshiping her and she cannot take worship. Women cannot take worship. It just goes to the head, it just blows up. They just become insatiable beasts where you cannot satisfy them. So that's what romance teaches men that they should do in order to get a woman. And once they do that, it harms the relationship. The woman's never satisfied. Now, another thing about romance is that it just can't be sustained. So a man will early in the relationship start out with all this praise and all this affection and gifts and, and um, consistent cards and he's sending stuff and he's constantly doing things to show his, his desire and love for the woman. But at some point he got to go to work. At some point he had to focus on his projects. And that's when things begin to tailor off into the marriage. Five years in, he's not doing those things. And the woman is like, what, what happened? He used to do this early on in the marriage. Now you don't do it anymore. Well, it's just not as sustainable. If romance is about a man constantly showing his appreciation and affection for his woman by doing these things that I mentioned, these, these gestures of romance, then it's just not sustainable. He's going to fall off at some point because he ain't supposed to be doing it anyway. It's against God's design for a man to worship a woman. He just can't do it for a long period of time. It's just going gonna, gonna to burn him out and then he's just not going to be doing it. As I said before in another sermon, marriage was made for men, not women. Okay, and I'm going to link that sermon in the, in the sermon notes so you can listen to it again. But marriage was made for men, not women. A man is not on his earth to please a woman and to worship a woman. She's actually on his earth to please him. All right and help him fulfill his goals, you see? So romance, another problem with romance is that it distracts a man from his goals in life. If a man is caught up with pleasing a woman, making sure all her desires and wants in life are catered to, stuff that's not important, that's non-essential, he's gonna miss his opportunity to fulfill God's calling for his life. Whatever purposes he has, it's going to be split between the woman's, her desires and wants, and what he's doing. And a lot of men never fulfill their purpose because they're too focused on giving their wife a vacation when it's not stuff she actually needs. But he thinks he has to do all that stuff in order to please her. Okay, and once again, once he stops, she, she feels discontent. She starts looking elsewhere. Okay, a man was on his earth to please God, to focus on what God has for him to do. So... Contrarily, since a woman's sole purpose has, was to help her husband, the romance should be about a woman's reference and devotion to her husband. That's what it really should be about. But unfortunately, like I said, we live in a gynocentric society, so it's, it's focused on her. Basically, romance is a problem. Those are the problems with romance. All right. So what does the Bible say about romance? Well, the Song of Solomon could be considered a book about romance, but the Bible doesn't support female worship as we've seen romance is really about idolatry and it doesn't support a man or teach or teach a man to put a woman first 
Okay. He needs to put his goals and his things first. And the woman is supposed to support him and she should be putting him first in her life. Okay. That's what the Bible really teaches. So we're not going to go over this again. We, we, we are in, a, in another sermon, but women were created for men. Her sole purpose is to be focused on what her man wants. So she's putting her man first. So this idea that a man's supposed to be putting a woman first is all is BS because the Bible says a man is here to do the will of God. And the woman was created specifically for the purposes of helping him fulfill that. Okay. She should be putting his desire and needs and his commands first. All right. But here's what the Bible says about how men and women are interact with each other. And in the book of Ephesians, chapter five, verses 22 through the end of the chapter, it talks about husbands love your wives. It talks about wives submitting to your husbands. The word love here is agapeo, okay, in the Greek. And it means to be welcoming to your wife, fond of your wife. It means you like your wife. You show that you like your wife. You show affection to your wife. You're tender with your wife, meaning that you're accepting of her. You're appreciative of what she does, okay? You're warm with her and you're compassionate. And in the book of Titus, chapter two, verses four, it tells wives to love their husbands. And the same, a different word is used for, for love for husbands here. This is a word actually dedicated to love for man. So the word philandrius, the word philandrius in the Greek means love for a man, a love of man. So a woman, once again, if you look up that definition of, of philanderous, you get the same set of um, words, welcoming, fond of, affectionate, tender, which is accepting of your man, appreciative, warm, and compassionate. So it's the same list, you know? And so this is what God is telling men and women to do for one another. He's not telling them to shower them, each other with gifts and go on expensive trips and with money you don't have and do all this stuff, this role, quote unquote, romantic gestures. However, it's nothing wrong with those things. It's just, they have to be in the proper order. Okay, a man ought to be focused on what he needs to do for God, and a woman should be focused on helping her, her, her husband or a man be all he can be, okay, as he commands her to, all right? So what can be done here? First of all, a man's focus should be fulfilling his purpose, not romance. So a lot of men are dating, they're courting. It shouldn't be about how well he can show off how much he loves his woman. His love for his woman should be shown in his actions, simply by agape love, as you know, as we talked about in, in past sermons. And then of course, it should be shown in agapeo love, which we just, we just gave the definition for those list of words, affection and you know, appreciative and all that kind of stuff. If he's showing that, that's good enough to start the relationship off. He does not need to buy expensive drinks, dinners, go on cruises, all of that stuff. None of that stuff is necessary. Now, along with that, he should be finding a woman that is willing to help him fulfill his purpose. So a woman that's submissive, a woman that is obedient, a woman who is supportive, that's what he should be looking for. That's what should be his focus. So men stop getting, stop being romantic, stop. I'm talking to you single men right now, stop. Stop doing all that stuff. Focus on your purpose. And when you, and when you come across a woman you're attracted to, see if she fits your purpose. See if she can help you as a wife. You know, we're gonna talk about what a wife is and what she looks like, but, that's what you ought to focus on. Another thing here is women should focus on their men, their creation role, which is why, why were you created ladies? To aid and help a man be all he can be as he commands you, all right? You're here to, to serve him. Women, ladies, you're here to serve your man, okay? So instead of being self-centered, which, which is what society teaches you, you need to be focused on your man. What, what are his needs? What is he asking you to do? And, and perform those duties for him. OK, whether you're married or not, if you, you're dealing with a guy you're about to be married to, show yourself to be a wife. And we'll talk about what a wife looks like and we'll go over those in, in detail. This is how it should be. Forget all this romantic stuff. It's going to come up later, though. So, ladies, you got to reject those lies from the world. talking about you need to be treated this way. You need to be done this. No, the man's supposed to love you according to scriptures that we just mentioned. If he's showing you a guy pay your love. If he's showing you agape love, that's good enough. That's what you should be focused on. Looking at that man's character, if that is consistent, if that is constant, that's a good man. That's what you're basing this stuff off of. Don't worry about the romance stuff. It'll come later. All right. Here's the key thing here. A wife should receive agape love because of her status. This is what God commands. Men and women should love each other. This is how it's supposed to go. 
But romantic gestures, watch this, should only be given by husbands in proportion to her performance as a wife or a wife to be. Basically rewards for excellent service. So if a woman is showing, if a wife is showing that she's, she's doing what she's supposed to do as a wife, then a man can give her gifts in proportion to her performance. If she's given great performance, she should give greater gifts. As the man see, you know, I'm gonna bless my wife today because she's just, she's just been just a good mother to our children. She's just been just a good woman to me. She loves me, she respects me. I come home, the house is clean and it's quiet. I don't wanna leave sometime, it's so comfortable here. You know, she gives me sex, her cooking is great. This is when a man in turn rewards his wife for her good performance. That's when a romance comes in. A man should not be giving that to a woman if she has not done any of that. Some women today believe that they're supposed to get all of this romantic stuff and they're not even respecting their husband. Then they say, well, if he respected me first and if he did all this for me and if he did this for me, then I'll do this for him. No, no, it don't work that way. Women ought to come into a relationship focused on the man. Why? Because they were created for the man. Your whole and sole purpose on this earth, ladies, it's to age your men if you're going to be married. Now, if you're not going to be married, you're going to be single, then God will use you in other ways. You may find some other purpose in the, in the world. There's a lot of women who are not married. They have a different purpose. But if you are married, if you're going to be married, your focus should be on your man. So you don't come into a relationship waiting for the man to do something for you first. When your whole purpose of being there is to aid him and to help him, you should come in already ready to clean, cook. You should already be coming in with that mindset. And men, you should have the mindset that the woman, that's what she's supposed to do. So you don't come into the relationship trying to praise her with all these gifts. She don't deserve none of that. She hasn't shown herself to be a wife. You don't give a woman you're not married to who have not shown you that she loves you and that she's obedient and that she is a virtuous wife, all that gifts. She don't do all of that. She gets that in proportion to her performance. And it, it, like I said, this is natural for a man. A godly man is going to give you, he gonna, he's going to praise you with affirmations. In, in, the, in the book of Proverbs chapter 31, it says that a virtuous woman should be praised. She's going to get praised. Ladies, if you, you looking beautiful, you are cooking, you're keeping the house clean. He comes to a, in a home that is peaceful and quiet and comfortable. You're going to be praised for that. You're going to be giving gifts. You're going to be doing that. You know, and even though you're supposed to do it, he's still going to praise you for it. You see what I'm saying? Now, I hear a lot of women say, look, he need to do that for me first. He need to give me gifts first and do all this stuff. Then, I'll, then in exchange, I may give him some sex. In exchange, I may keep the house cleaner. No. So men start a relationship. Look for those things. Instead of you going out and spending money at a restaurant, give her money to buy groceries to cook something for you to see how her, how her home skills are. If she's going to be a, a wife that's going to be at home taking care of you and stuff like that, and you see her as that, then that's what you should start the relationship off as. How she can serve you. And if she doesn't want to do that, then she's not wife material. Simple as that. She's not a woman uh, that you want. You don't want a woman like that. I, well, I got to cook you something. I ain't cooking you nothing. You want me to go out and buy some groceries? I ain't doing all that. Let's go to a restaurant. I, that's not a woman that's just going to here to help you. She's in it for herself. OK, that's the average Western gynocentric woman. She's about herself. She's self-centered. You don't want a woman like that. So start your relations off with stuff like that. You know, a virtuous woman is to be praised only after a relationship is, is established and a woman has shown herself to be a wife. Should she be praised? OK, should she be showered with gifts? These are the rewards of that. And a woman, even a, in a wife, if you see that your husband is doing real well by you, you can do the same for him. Give him gifts, something he's been always talking about he wanted, and you got the resources that he gave to you, do something for him. But we live in a world where the man is pretty much a resource basically right now. He lives to cater to her. And he thinks that, you know, that's gonna make me happy if I make her happy. No, man, women are at their happiest if they're serving their husbands, okay? Women are at their happiest when they're serving their husbands. So, that's all I got to say you, to you about romance. Romance is okay. The gestures of romance are just fine. But the what romance as it is right now in this country is it's female worship is making a man put a woman first. It's a lot of resources wasted on a woman for this little stuff just to make her happy, which will never make her happy. 
And then women feel like this is how it's supposed to be. They don't get it. They feel discontent. They start thinking about cheating on their man, getting somebody else to do it for them. Okay, no man can satisfy this because this is not the will of God for women. They ain't supposed to be worshipped. Okay? Now, does God want a man to love his wife? Yes, that's what scriptures say. Does a God want women to love their husband? Yes, that's what scriptures say. And they also want women to submit to the man, as the scriptures say as well. And we'll talk about that in another sermon. The bottom line is, ladies must come into the relationship with a servitude mindset. Not about what she gonna get, but what she can do for him. And then vice versa, he's gonna automatically, if he's a man of God, bring that right back to her. She's gonna be praised. She's gonna be loved. She's gonna be showered with gifts and stuff like that. A woman is her happiest when she's serving her man. This is the will of God for women. And men, you need to support this. Stop showering women with gifts and, and all this stuff and stop being romantic. Only give out gifts and praise and all that stuff as the woman is performing, as she's saying, showing herself to be a woman of God. Support that, right? Get off this romance stuff, okay? That ladies, that means you got to start watching these these videos, these movies, okay? You got to burn up some of these novels because they're just twisting your mind. They're telling you one thing, and it's causing you to have problems in your marriage. The man is taking care of business. He's paying the bills, okay? The man's paying the bills. He's, he's, he's loving you, he's there for you, and you're talking about this ain't enough. It's not enough, it's, it is enough. And unfortunately, a lot of women, he would probably do more for you if you was treating him right. Because like I said, a gynocentric society makes a woman out to be self-centered and she doesn't think too much about her man. And because men have been taught to accept less than and not even value themselves in this country, they accept it, they put up with a woman Barely cooking, barely giving him any sex, barely respecting him, you know, barely keeping the house intact. He always complaining about the house not being warm and clean and stuff like that. Barely supporting him. She, he puts up with being berated and disrespected by his wife. Women will go on national television or they will go on these, these platforms online where millions of people are going to see them talk bad about their husband while their husband is sitting right next to them talking about how the man ain't good enough, he ain't doing his best, disrespect this man in front of everybody. And it's a video, so now it's being, re it's, it's, it's recorded, it's copied, it's, it's passed around, and everybody can see how she's treating this man. And nobody thinks anything of it, okay? This is the society we live in, but it's wrong. Men, you gotta stop being romantic. Be romantic in accordance to her behavior. When her behavior changes and she shows herself to be a great wife, one that is virtuous, one that follows your command, that's submissive, you can then shower her with gifts. And ladies, you, you're gonna shower your man with gifts, even though he, you're already following his commands and doing right by him. You're still gonna do more for him because of your love for him. When, when men and women are operating in their roles properly, it's, it's a beautiful thing. When a man is fully masculine and leading the household and doing what he's supposed to do, focusing on his purpose, when that woman is operating in her, in her full femininity, and supporting that man and making that man her focus and her and she she wake up thinking about what she can do for him everything is working together now at this point why because this is the, this is god's design we need to get back to god's design we need to reject the lies of society which are coming from satan to destroy marriages we can't think the way society teaches us we got to get rid of these lies and deceptions so ladies get rid of the, the, the romance novels men stop being so romantic up front. Stop doing all this stuff for women, okay? Because all you're doing is, is, is spoiling them. So until next time, walk in the spirit, okay, and be blessed.